Yo, Logan. Yo, press that silver button on that deck. They're pulled out. Brand new Kano. It's the lead off single from the album 140 Grime Street. Entitled Hustler. Da Vinci? Mikey. Mikey? Ah, got some Da Vinci stuff on there, those. So, got some, um, a lot of stuff lined up. That's what yeah. I want to ask you, man. Got a few to play today, man. Who have you, you worked with on this project? Because the name 140 Grime Street is a statement in itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is the whole album going to be basically a, a grime project then? What, what I really tried to do with the album was um was use the 140 as a template, you know what I mean, for the music that we was creating in the studio it was a, a project that i approached mikey with and i was like this is what i want to do this was um just after finished recording london town and um he was like yeah it'll be a wicked idea but i did say i don't i didn't want every track to sound the same you know what i mean i know it's called one for ground street but not everything you know what i mean it sounded like this but um so yeah so i linked up with uh, mikey got da vinci involved I mean, and I know a lot of people wanted me to work with Da Vinci ever since P's and Q's, you know what I mean? So, um, we done some work, two heavy tracks on there. Would have been rude not to go to Wiley. You know what I mean? Being cool, 140 Grand Street and no Wiley. <laughs> so yeah, we, I went to Wiley and we got a couple tracks. One that he's on, the one that he produced. And um, Skepta, also um, linked up with Skepta and we got a track and he's featuring on it and he produced it as well. So yeah, there's a few people in there. That's interesting, man. And I mean... And Ghetto's on the album as well. Yeah? Yeah, Ghetto's on That's the album. That's good to see, because I know people, a lot of people are looking forward to hearing you guys work again as well. Yeah, I think this is the album that is just... You know, when when I'm just about and people's like, yeah, you need to make another track with Ghetto, and yeah, you need to work with Da Vinci, and blah, 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 and you and Wild, you need to... This is just gonna, you know what I mean, be right up their street. This is, this is for me, it's sort of like um, a project that a lot of people... Uh, around me a lot of listeners show been waiting for a long period of time you know some of your status you know your two albums deep already you've been through you know the major label situation and that and you know returning to make the music that a lot of people loved you for initially um obviously applying a lot of the skills and stuff you've learned developing as a recording artist over the last couple of years mm -hmm. to that the the you know the 140 template the grime template yeah. do you feel that you know, going back to it now, you're bringing more skills to the table in terms of being able to artistically create music that's a lot more different rather than just standard spraying yeah. bars on a 140 beat. Yeah, I think it's an album that if, if people hear the album and think, um, I could have or should have made this album when I was 17, I couldn't have. You know what I mean? It took learning what I had learned like through making them two albums and just through growing up and just developing my skills to actually make this you know what I mean so what I try to do is as I said take the template of 140 and see where I could take it creatively really you know what I mean it's got the backbone it's got the tracks that are instantly yeah like grime and then it's got um bits in between that kind of fill the gaps and tell the story you know what I mean and as the album starts it's kind of it's kind of me in my mom's bedroom I mean, in my, in my mum's house rather than my bedroom where we used to make tapes and whatnot and kind of just dreaming to get out of there, you know what I mean? It starts like, I'm from 140 Grimes Street and you can come over this Friday, I'm from a party, I got tunes, I got decks, so we're set for the night, you know what I mean? So feel free if you want to step to the mic and then it, it, it goes on through there and it, it ends with a track kind of the position that I am in now, you know what I mean? Having, having put out these two albums and having been through the whole industry thing and the major record label and that one's called Aim for the Sky so it's, it's a real story when can people uh, expect to be able to you know grab hold of this this album because I know people have been waiting for it as yeah. soon as they saw the name you know a couple months back as soon as it was announced mm. there's been all sorts of you know interest in that if you got a date for it yeah the album will be out in September September the September the 9th Okay. Just check the paper there. Just the name. <laughs> the single will be out on September the first. All right. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna be hitting the promotion up all summer. Yeah, I'm gonna be hitting the promotion up. You're gonna same thing. Videos and shows. I'm going on tour through the end of September okay. to October. Like I'm doing a like extensive club tour. So gonna be touching a lot of places I ain't been before, and it's gonna make it one real big thing. So. 
Well, as you said, you did work together with, with Wiley on the seat and you brought that track for us now. I'm going to run that. Uh-huh. Um, I've not heard this at all. I've not heard this. No, this is exclu- I don't I'm even know if Wiley's forward. heard this version, by the way. Sorry, How tight the, the whole scene, you know, the whole scene locks in on a Monday night. They, uh-huh. they, they come out studio, they put the radio on. What's this one called, sir? This one's called Anywhere We Go, featuring Wiley's Kate. Hey. This is called Anywhere We Go, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Kano and Wiley in collaboration. I've got a big, stupid grin on my face listening to that, you know. <laughs> Songs on authentic grime beats is what I've been waiting for for so long. It feels and good, innit? I'm happy that, you know, everyone's, it seems like everyone's sort of coming back together again, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I feel that way too, yeah. Everyone has to put that, you know, the legwork in through the major label system. Um, I want to get into that situation because there's been a lot of rumours, a lot of people talking nonsense about your situation with 679 and Warner. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't understand how that, that sort of works. How did you part ways with, with Warner and 679? Do you want to go into that a little bit, if you're able to? How long you got? <laughs> <laughs> Try and keep it under four minutes. <laughs> but that situation there, yeah, it, it come to an end, but um, not really got too too much bad to say about them. You know what I mean? It's not a situation where I hate them and they hate me and it's, and it's like that, you know? They call it acrimonious. It was, um, I suppose I was going through a couple of issues with them creatively especially moving forward and the type of the type of deal that it would be and um it was at a time i was releasing a record the whole label had a switch round and warners were buying out the company and the guy that actually signed me the md nick he he had sold the company and a lot of staff had left and it was just a situation like that really and i just felt I just didn't feel comfortable really so mentally I kind of I kind of left them you know what I mean they they had put out the single and done really well the best my single was ever done so the most album was in the first week I had ever done you know what I mean Charlie the highest. Went in at seven wasn't it straight away or was it? Yeah and then what, what did it end up? Wherever up there in the top 20 and the single too but um yeah, it was just a situation where I thought, like, creatively, I think I can go more in an independent direction. Mm. Just just make some music I want to make and, you know I mean, couldn't really see myself being on, which would be Warners or Atlantic, you know what I mean, after 679, gone. And just people I really, really want to work with, you know what I mean? And mm. I've come through the industry such a long way in a short space of time that I kind of know what I want. I know what they yeah. can give me, but I know where to get that from now. I mean, a lot of people were saying stuff about dropped and all that sort of talk. It was not that for yeah, you. It's, it's, it's not really that, no. you know what I mean? I done my two albums with them, Firm, and it just really wasn't a situation where we was going to move forward. So it was like, I didn't want to be there. And then, so, so you're now yeah. moving forward on your own, independently under your own steam. Yeah. Is this project going to be, I mean, have you got a label name for your own projects that you're working under now? Or? Yeah, the label's called BPM. Okay. Bigger Picture Music, it stands for. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, and uh, we also know what BPM stands for. Mm. But um, yeah, that's the name, so that's why I'm pushing this album through. Now, I mean, it's just a situation that I feel is comfortable for this type of music, especially, and you know what I mean, we're experts in it and we know how to market ourselves better than any other major record label really so it's all good and obviously you know you're taking advantage of your contacts still you got access to you know to the to the distribution to the, the press people yeah distribution is still you know distribution throughout the uk throughout europe it's in all the, asia it's everywhere so it's look hey logan take this one down 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 you are locked into Logan Sarma. Right now you're listening to Kiss. Totalkiss.com